this video, I'm going to show you how to configure SNMP version 3 on a Cisco switch. Um, if you're still using uh, version 1 or version 2, you really need to uh, start moving those to uh, version 3 as the previous versions are very insecure. Uh, there's no encryption, and I will show you at the end of this video a demonstration on how insecure um, version 1 and version 2 are by running a packet uh, sniffer on the network, you can get the community string, and then when you have the community string, you can use um, SNMP uh, tools to retrieve information from devices on the network. Uh, so to get started, I'm on a Cisco switch here, and SNMP version three is configured uh, a lot differently than one and two. It's done by creating a group, um, setting the group security level and then creating a user assigning it to the group and uh, setting passwords and encryption sounds complicated but it's it's very simple so let's get started here you do snmb and then the group command and then you just type in whatever you want the group to be i'm just going to call it group one and then I'm just doing question marks so you can see um, what all the options are. So then after you put in your group, you specify which uh, SNP version you want. We're going to use version 3. And then this is where you set the security levels. So the, let's see, no auth. This is the least secure option. It just is configured with the username, no password, and no encryption. The auth security level uh, sets a password and provides encryption for the authentication, but there's no encryption for the end-to-end -end communication from the from your uh, from your Cisco switch router, whatever your device is, to your um, server that's doing the SNMP uh, queries. There's no end-to-end -end communication there. And then the last one here, uh, auth priv is what it's uh, actually stands for. This provides uh, full encryption, encryption for the authentication, and encryption for end-to-end -end communication. And this is the one we're going to use in this demonstration, and the one I uh, recommend you configure it on your devices. So we could just uh, hit enter now, and that would. Uh, configure it, but if I hit question mark, there is a bunch of additional options. So SNMP version 3 uh, enables uh, several different uh, features that you can configure. I won't go through all of these, but there uh, there is some uh, additional examples on my website for um, access. And this is, this is a good one to use. You can create an access list that will uh, limit which uh, servers can query devices, you know, so you don't you don't want just some random computer server user out there on your network to be able to do SNMP uh, queries to your devices. So you can use an access list to lock that down. Um, you can also use uh, create views. So uh, maybe you don't want uh, your your SNMP server to query all of the, the MIBs from your device. Maybe you just want to see certain uh, information like um, uptime or your interfaces. So you can use views to lock that down. I won't go into that here, but again, there's some uh, additional examples on my website. So I can just hit enter, and now we've got the group and security level configured. So now I create the user. And then I specify the name of the user. I'll just call it user1. And then the group you want to assign it to. And I'm going to assign it to group1, the group we just created. And if I hit question mark, we're going to do version 3. And I'm going to do off to set the authentication parameters. And I'm going to use the SHA encryption alg algorithm. And then you set the password. And then the encryption perimeters. And 
I'll use AES. And I'm going to use 128. Um, for production, I would use a, a higher encryption algorithm, but I'm going to use uh, an SNMP tester tool to verify the SNMP is working, and this tester tool does not support higher um, encryption algorithm uh, such as 256, so I'm going to use 128 just to uh, demonstrate. Um, oh, I forgot to set a password, privilege password. So that was a long command. Let me pull over uh, the command. This is on my website. So you create a user. This is user, user three. Sign it to a group. Set the SNMP version. Uh, set the authentication parameters by uh, specifying auth command. Set the encryption algorithm and then your password. And then the privilege command, uh, the encryption uh, you want to use the encryption uh, bits there and then your password so that's that's really it now SNP is configured and to verify that let me pull up this little tool called it's a free tool from Parsler uh, SNP tester and it's a, a handy little tool to to verify SNP is configured correctly um, so you just enter in your local IP, the computer you're going to run a test from, and then your device. So this is my switch IP. I'm going to set it to version 3. Uh, the user was user1. Authentication was SHA. And then my password. The encryption was AES and and then I'm just going to do a quick query for the uptime start I had the wrong user in there I had user and the user is actually user one so once I fix that I click start you can see that it gets the uptime from the device, which is four hours and 38 minutes. So from my remote computer, I was able to uh, use SNMP version three to query my router and get the uptime. So that verifies the SNMP uh, version three configuration is good. Um, so now you can use your um, monitoring tools to use SNMP three to query your devices. Um, and then you can also use, if you wanted to see your SNMP configuration, you can do show SNMP user to see uh, what user you have, the authentication protocol, the encryption protocol, what groups it's assigned to, and then you can do show SNMP group to see the group information. You see, I've got another group here, but here's the group we created in this demonstration. Uh, the security model it's using. And by default, um, if you don't specify, the, the group will have uh, read access to um, all the MIBs. It won't have write access, you'll have to specify that. So pretty simple um, again I've got this information uh, step by step on my website um, my website I go into a little more details on the different security levels and then I walk through about four different examples using the different security levels um, example three is the one that we just walked through and I go into some details about setting up the SNP tester and then if you do want to set up an access list example four um, walks through setting up an access list. It's basically the same way you'd set up any access list on a Cisco switch. Um, once you give it a name, you can then just use the uh, access command from, from when you configure SNMP and then specify the access list name. 
So now let me show you uh, how insecure uh, version one and version two is. Uh, I'm going to open up Wireshark. So I got Wireshark open up here, um, packet sniffer tool, and then I will run an SNMP query in the background. And from my computer, I'm, I'm capturing all of the network traffic um, that's going from computers to switches to routers on my little network here. And you'll see I'll be able to capture the SNP traffic, um, grab the string, which is basically the password. Um, then I can take that password and use some SNMP tools to uh, get information from the device. So let me demonstrate that. Okay, so I've got Wireshark running here, and then I'll have um, some SNMP queries going to the background. You can see I've captured some SNMP traffic right there. So let me stop this, and right there you can see the community string. So I didn't, I didn't have to do anything other than just install Wireshark and start uh, grabbing those packets from the network. And SNP version one and two sends no encryption, so I can see all of the details of that communication from a server to a switch router or whatever device you're trying to monitor with. Monitor with version one and two. So now that I've got that community string, I can go use another tool to um, get get information from those devices. So let me show you that. Okay, so I'm on a, a Linux computer here, which has some built, built in SNMP tools. Um, so all I gotta do is run this command, uh, put in the IP address of the target device, and then dash C and then the community string that I was able to capture using Wireshark. And then this computer will go out, give it a few seconds here. And now it's returned lots of information from that computer. Um, let me just scroll up here. Uh, it's grabbed storage information. It's grabbed all the running processes. Um, bunch of service information. This looks like port information. Um, interface information. Bunch of user accounts. So this must be some kind of authentication server. Uh, more storage information. Let's see if I can get up to the top here. Um, let's see. Here's some host information, IP address, host name, contact information, domain information. So point, point is you can, um, this demonstrates how insecure version one and version two is. Um, all I had to do was capture the community string because it's unencrypted. Then I can use various tools to uh, use that string to, to uh, get details from remote devices. So um, if you're on one and two, I recommend upgrading to version three and using the, uh, the privilege security level to make sure authentication and end-to-end -end communication is encrypted. That's it for this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this, if you enjoyed it, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my website, netlinko.com, for more networking tutorials. Thanks for watching.